When we're looking at fractions or equivalent proportions, we are using that proportional relationship and the times divide relationship between the parts. So here I can see that there is a multiplier of times by 3 going from left to right. So I can work out the unknown part of that proportion. If I'm going in the opposite direction, I'm going to divide by 3. So here I end up with 3 over 15 is equal to 9 over 45. And again, it's really important for us to make sure that we are working out these multipliers. So for example, we can do our multiplier this way, and we can find our multiplier by dividing. So in this case, if I do 45 divided by 21, I'm going to end up with oops, 45 divided by 21 works out to be an uh, awkward fraction. It ends up being 9 over, sorry, 15 over 7. So we could use that decimal of 2.14 or 15 over 7 and use that as a multiplier, but we could also use the multiplier going in the vertical direction. So I can see that 45 divided by 15 is 3, so there's my times 3 multiplier. So I can actually go in the opposite direction by dividing by 3. So I get 7 over 21 is equal to 15 over 45. In fact, they both simplify to 1 third. And when you do these problems, it's always a good idea to show these multipliers and the direction. Because remember that the proportional equation has a directionality to its multiplication and division. So here we can use the same proportional relationship. So we have 15% of $90 is going to be 15 out of 100% is going to be same as some number out of $90. And so I'm going to use this vertical multiplier. So I'm going to do 15 divided by 100. That gives me my decimal percentage. And I can use that decimal percentage going from bottom to top. So times by 0.15. And I end up with 90 times 0.15 works out to be 13 point five dollars or thirteen dollars and fifty cents and again make sure that you have the directionality you understand which direction we're going with these multipliers and we can work out those proportions in this way so using that same decimal multiplier so this vertical multiplier is what we call a unit rate sometimes but it also is our decimal in terms of a percentage problem it is our decimal percentage we work out out to be point two eight and I can use that same decimal percentage, but this case, I'm going to go down. So I need to do the opposite. I need to divide by 0.28. So I get 112 divided by 0.28 gives me 400. So 112 represents 28% of 400. If I want to do a percentage problem, there are lots of shortcuts we can do, but again, if I'm not sure what I'm, I, whether I should times or divide, I can just write it as a proportional equation. So comparing 38% to 100%, I just have to make sure I know if the 550 represents the part on top or the whole on bottom. So 550, in this case, represents the whole. My decimal multiplier is 0.38. Okay, and it's always in the direction going bottom to top, so I need to use that same multiplier of 0.38. And because I'm going from bottom to top, I know I'm going to times instead of divide. And that's often the, the difficulty is people mix up their times and divide. And by doing this, we know that we can, we are, can be more confident whether we are using the right operation of times or divide. So in this case, the answer is going to be 209. So 38% of 550 is 209. Now, if some of you use the multiplying strategy for this, you can feel free to do that. But again, make sure that we are clear on whether we are timesing or dividing with that strategy. Here we have 33 is 22% of what number? So I'm going to do 22% compared to 
Now in this case, the 33 represents, goes with the 22%. So the unknown part is going to be the whole. So our decimal multiplier is 0.22. And I'm going to use that in the opposite direction. And this is why this proportional equation is nice, because we can see very clearly that we're going in the opposite direction. So instead of multiplying by 22%, I'm going to divide by 22%. So I go 33 divided by 22.22 gives me 150. So that represents the whole. So 33 is 22% of 150. So the answer is 150.